My first early childhood memory was falling into Shaker Lake. Um, and I was probably two and a half at the time, or a little less than two and a half. And I remember uh, being very, it was very pleasant. I fell in and I was looking up and could see the waves and little wavelets. And uh, then people grabbed me and pulled me out and there was a lot of shouting and yelling. Jack Ullman was the final Commodore of the Shaker Lakes Canoe Club. His father, John, became a member in 1910, just three years after the founding of the club, and Commodore for several years after that. Jack, however, oversaw the final years of the organization, as well as the dissolvement of the club in the early 1970s. Jack grew up going to the lake every week with his father. Some of his fondest childhood memories were at the canoe club. It, um, it was the center part of my life because my parents divorced when I was younger and I, I loved boating and I loved water so it's the place that my dad took me to eight months a year. We would canoe in the fall and in the spring and then even in the winter time there was, a, there was an oil furnace in the place as well as a beautiful fireplace upstairs so we would go up and talk and watch television and things like that and even in the winter time. So it was the center part of my childhood really with my dad. When Jack graduated from college, he returned to Cleveland and became a member of the Canoe Club once again, although a more active member than ever before. The Canoe Club was an every week, sometimes several times. And then when I turned 21, I got a key to the building. I think I was probably elected Commodore when I was 23 or 24. Oh, wow. Well, it was no honor. I mean, nobody wanted to do it. Though the Canoe Club began to decline in the late 1960s and 70s, when it was first built, the building was the focal point of the suburban oasis. There was originally a boathouse on the other side of the lake that was kind of a ramshackle boathouse, and it burned down. And uh, then uh, during uh, uh, the Depression, Shaker Heights mayor, and I don't remember his name, was able to get money from the WPA, or one of the work, make work programs that the government operated. And with $30,000, they built the clubhouse that was existed on the other side of the lake. A huge, a huge building, really, and uh, four pillars of tree trunks that were used for the main porch, and uh, a large dance floor upstairs, a den, a kitchen, and then downstairs the canoe storage and the restrooms. So, pretty big building. The building was very sturdily built, but it eventually did not live up to Shaker Heights' strict building code. There was no running water, so we had these big army, and they had a name like J Can or something like that. Out, but I don't remember the name. But they were huge, and my father's sister, uh, Mary, lived on Wicklow, right across the street from Shaker Lakes, from the bottom lake, the lower lake. And so we would drive over and fill it at her, you know, outdoor faucet, all these jerry cans, and then I would carry them up. <laughs> and they were heavy. The canoe club hosted several regattas. Jack's large and very heavy boat participated in the wildest of games. Also gunnel races, we tried those, and that you stand in the stern on the, on the gunnels again, and you bounce, and by bouncing you make the boat go forward. Mm -hmm. Not real efficient, but... Jack's father, John, along with several members of the club were musicians. Jack fondly remembers the concerts and moonlight carnivals. Now in the old days, the regattas would end with my father and a group of others who I don't really know their names, were all musicians, guitars and mandolins. Those were the two things that they had. And I think about that whenever I see R.E.M. performing, because of course they have a mandolin player, frequently featured. My dad played the mandolin beautifully. Uh, but at any rate, uh, and they would tie the boats off and they would light lanterns, you know, the candle type Japanese lanterns. Mm -hmm. And then they would sing, and also a big raft of boats, and they would all sing. The private club was unlike some of its days. I always looked at it as a real uh, open club, inexpensive. Uh, you didn't have to be wealthy to join. Um, you know, there were all kinds of people. There were physicians and bus drivers, and you know, it was just all a real interesting mix of people, and just a lot of nice folks. However, anti-Semitism, racism, and sexism were evident in the exclusivity of the club. That the club did not admit African Americans. The club did not admit Jews until the okay. very end. There were two Jewish guys that, admit, uh, that I admitted in my administration, but they were the first. And those were days of anti-Semitism and racism. During the club's decline, it became difficult to canoe on the lake. 
the historic dam created by the North Union Shakers was no longer functional as it used to be. Some of the members of the canoe club took matters into their own hands. We illegally, not me personally, but the <laughs> club members illegally snuck down at night where the lower bridge is and they put in boards to keep the water from flowing out mm. over that waterfall. And that way they could control the height of the lake. They never made it so that it would wash over the, anything. During Jack's time as Commodore, the club had several run-ins with the Shaker Heights Police Department and Fire Department. Um, there were all sorts of things that happened. In fact, one night we were having a meeting, it was in the middle of winter, and all of a sudden we heard steps coming up the stairway into the dance floor area where we were meeting in the den, and uh, four policemen came with their, their guns drawn, which was really pretty scary, you know. And uh, we were there, five of us probably, four or five of us, just officers of the club having our, our monthly meeting. And uh, somebody had called in and said there was action down at the club and probably something was going on, and so they came down to investigate. But they took it seriously enough that they had their guns out and somebody had forgotten to lock the door. So, you know, that could have been criminals as well. We were very fortunate, I guess, in that regard. Uh, the police had more and more calls down there. They became more frustrated with it. It was a private club existing in a place that really didn't have room for a private club. The biggest thing also is we had no plumbing. Uh, eventually, a, a warrant was made for my arrest by the fire department, and that, that was the scariest part of the whole thing. And uh, it, you know, I was a school teacher at the time, a, a young beginning school teacher. The idea of being arrested was not a good idea, you know, and uh, it was a pretty frightening experience all the way around. So at that point, we gave up. Now, all that remi remains of the building is the original foundation and boat ramp. The site was recently uncovered by the Friends of Lower Lake a local volunteer group. Jack and many Shaker residents hope to see work continue on Lower Lake and for it to return to its prime.